And while this isn't the most delicious snack, it is as sure as hell nutritious snack. I'm gonna take a huge bite out of these testicles. Yeah, I'm gonna recommend that you not do that. Not because it's gross, but because it's dangerous. And I've got the science to back it up. Hello, primals! Welcome to Food Theory, the show that gives you the raw truth about raw food. Today, we're talking about the Liver King, an influencer who showed up on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube just over a year ago and has set the world on fire with his ancestral approach to living. Basically, his idea is that mankind, and specifically the dude part of mankind, have become scrawny little wimpy men, and that's making us primarily unhappy, leading to high rates of depression and anxiety in today's male youth. He broadcasts statistics about our chronic male depression. Somebody doesn't feel good. They can't get out of their house. They're depressed. I love my man. Do you want to take a picture? Yeah, let's take a picture. Yes, yes. The easiest, fastest way to change your life, start eating liver. This right here is PRIMAL! And his claim is that there's only one path to quality of life and happiness, liver. If you want unlimited access to cars, money, and if you want to find your queen, liver is King. That's right, that organ that you systematically destroyed for four years at your frat house in college, that is the most important organ for your ongoing happiness. But I should probably clarify, it's not your liver that's the important one, it's cow's liver. Old Bessie over there in the corner shaking in her hooves. According to the Liver King, you need to be carving her up, grabbing as many internal organs as you can get your hands on, and you need to be eating them raw. Also, you should throw in some eggs, raw, and some bone marrow, raw, and some strawberries, strawberry. Uh, just just kidding, strawberries are not part of the Liver King diet. This is a real guy, and yes, this is his quote-unquote diet. It's no wonder that this guy's been able to catch the attention of every dude bro podcaster from Joe Rogan to Logan Paul, and any other broadcaster with Ogin as a part of their name. It's also been covered by the internet commentary channels and tons and tons of fitness professionals. And who can blame them when they're covering a guy whose content involves eating raw meat, getting 2,000 pounds of ice delivered to him so he can spend the afternoon chilling in a 36 degree ice bath? More! to letting the sun shine where the sun don't normally shine. It's on your balls. It does improve androgens. I think it's pretty primal. This guy is just a walking billboard that says make content about me. The question is though, how much of this is bunk? Should you be doing anything that he recommends? Should you be spooning yourself bone marrow like it's a jello jiggler and munching down on internal organs walking dead style? Is there scientific evidence to support Liver King's idea that a diet of raw meat gives you a health boost or an evolutionary advantage over a typical diet? As someone who isn't a doctor, my answer is, I'm not a doctor, and offer no medical advice whatsoever. As someone on the internet who researches weird food stuff though, heck yes we said, we're gonna debunk this one. So, ladies and gentlemen, get ready to talk liver. The Liver King's diet is only a part of a whole lifestyle system that he calls the Nine Ancestral Tenants, which are designed to bring you back to the way your ancestors lived. Cold, starving, and riddled with parasites. Uh, wait, sorry, I, I mean powerful, strong, and dominant over all other life on the planet. The thing is, outside of the diet, many of these tenants are hard to argue with, mostly because they're basically common sense. Take the very first one on his website. Sleep. Get a lot of sleep. Great. Really shaking up the system with that one. Turn off your phone at least 30 minutes before bed. Don't eat too close to bedtime. This advice is touted by almost every wellness program out there. Surprise, surprise, it works. So when he's like, this is how you should live, it's like, yeah, duh. But it's not by any means a unique insight on his part. Several other tenants of his kind of play out this way too. Too, like this principle, move, which recommends shock of all shocks, take a long walk outside, bond, spend time with people that you love and support, sun, go outside. Even the ones that feel slightly less orthodox, like walking barefoot outside to connect with the ground or doing cold plunges to improve your circulation. Sure, they may be less common and not for everyone, but there are still tons of fitness experts out there that talk about polar bear swims and barefoot running. I, on the other hand, am not a fitness expert. Heck, I'm excited if I've managed to carry the heavy groceries in from the car, so I'm not here to to talk about his whole lifestyle package because honestly, I think a lot of it's pretty basic and can probably help a lot of us live healthier. No, my quibble today is with the namesake of this channel, the food, the raw organs that he's peddling. That's really where the Liver King's message departs from common fitness practices. It's also where it departs from all food health and safety guidelines. And as I'm about to show you, it's also where he departs from his own fitness principles. So let's just take a look at his diet, shall we? Technically, meat is not the only thing he eats, as he's also been documented to consume things like protein powder and maple syrup and steroids. Oops, yeah. After a year of claiming his body was completely natural, that little
Federal Revelation came out recently. It's not very ancestral of you there, Brian. That's his name, by the way. Brian. Brian Johnson. Don't worry, though. In a recent video, he very sincerely apologized for lying to everyone over the last year. You can tell he's sincere because he did it from atop his throne, and also immediately shifted his admission of wrongdoing to a completely unrelated topic. Reminder, this is the guy who started blowing up a year ago. Dude is speed running that online influencer life. He even got that deep sigh that every influencer does. <laughs> Amazing. But okay, the steroid use aside, the majority of his diet is advertised to be raw organ meat. Organ meat is usually not the part of the animal that people find most appetizing. When it comes to chicken, stuff like the liver and heart is part of the giblets that, if you're buying the whole chicken, often come pre-removed in a baggie that most people end up feeding to their dog. And that's only if the meat processing facility didn't just chuck it straight into the trash. Because at least in the US, most people don't eat those things at this point in history. Liver and onion? Beef? Kidney? Those used to be prominent across Europe a hundred years ago when people couldn't afford the cuts of meat that we eat now, but aren't considered the tastiest parts to eat, or the easiest parts to prepare these days. In fact, liver is a notorious punishment food in movies. You drink my medicine, I'll eat your liver. What's a liver? We're having liver and cabbage for dinner. Oh my god. Liver and cabbage. A Jewish medieval torch? And if you're a Zoomer who only watches TikTok, well, they hate liver over there too. Eat this liver. It don't smell like doo-doo. Eat this liver. But if anything, far from being relegated to dog food, organ meats are actually extremely dense in nutrients. Absolutely packed with vitamins and minerals. Liver in particular is absolutely deserving of being called king of the food world because it's just loaded with iron. To put things in perspective, red meat is one of the richest sources of iron, and beef will typically have 2.6 milligrams of iron per hundred grams, while an equal amount of liver would have 17.9 milligrams of iron. It is an S-tier source of iron, which is important when many people suffer from iron deficiencies, leading to anemia, affecting 23% of all people globally. And for young children up to age 5, that number is closer to 40%. And besides iron, liver is also chock full of other nutrients like vitamin A and B vitamins like vitamin B12. So it seems like this one might actually be a point for the liver king. It's a similar story for beef heart, which has 6.4 milligrams of iron per 100 grams. Nowhere near as much as the liver, but still more than twice as high as an equivalent amount of just a regular old cut of beef. And the heart is also packed with the B-complex vitamins, B2, B6, B12, all of which are great for cardiovascular health. Yep, that means much like Mega Man absorbing the powers of his defeated enemies, eating beef heart will cause your heart to become stronger. Pretty much every organ that the liver king names here, pancreas, spleen, kidney, all of them packed full of nutrients to the point where it really does have you wondering why we waste our times eating boring old muscle tissue all the time. It's even true of the Rocky Mountain oysters that the liver king is so fond of. Why eat vegetables when you can eat testicles? Well, testicles are far from the most appetizing part of the cow. These Montana tender groins are indeed an excellent source of nutrition. While they're roughly similar to regular cow meat in terms of protein content, as well as other nutrients that you'd expect to get from beef, testicles do have a slightly higher amount of potassium. With 100 grams of the stuff in there, offering about as much potassium as a small to medium-sized banana. That's not a euphemism, by the way. I actually do mean banana. So hey, if you can stomach it, go nuts. Badoom ching. Boy howdy, that's a winner. So what's the stigma then against all these superfoods? Well, one reason is that your boomer parents probably considered organ meat unhealthy because they contain a lot of cholesterol. And back in the 1960s, the thinking was that eating cholesterol in your food would lead you to have higher levels of blood cholesterol, which then is linked to heart disease. It seemed like common sense at the time, but just like how a high high fat diet doesn't necessarily lead to a high fat body, the current scientific consensus on cholesterol is that dietary cholesterol has little to no effect on your blood cholesterol. It turns out that the health experts of the 1960s were wrong. The main reason that the USDA recommends cutting down on high cholesterol foods isn't because of the dietary cholesterol itself, but because high cholesterol foods tend to have high amounts of saturated fat, which would be a problem for those suffering from heart disease. But actually, beef liver and beef heart tend to be leaner. They tend to have less saturated fat than the equivalent amount of beef. So, it looks like Liver King is actually ahead of the game on this one. Are there actual hard shortcomings to this diet? Higher cholesterol? This is all rubbish, right? Like, the whole the cholesterol idea thing. of track. You buy that cholesterol? Has something to do with heart? So, that's two points for the Liver King? Wait, this is still the same guy who doped up, lied about it, profited, and then apologized atop his throne, right? I'm siding with the throne guy? No, no, that's, that's not right. Well, hold on to your ancestral horses there, friends, because the tide's about to turn. While it might seem tempting to jump mouth first into the nearest cow liver, there's one problem. Tell him, Gordo. It's 
There's a reason we don't serve steaks and chicken like sushi. They're likely to carry pathogens like salmonella and dangerous E. coli strains. Ditto for listeria and campylobacter. There's just no shortage of bacteria that can cause food poisoning. And this is serious business. According to the World Health Organization, 600 million people get food poisoning every year. And of those, around 420,000 die. But clearly people do eat sushi and carpaccio, raw chopped beef, and live to tell the tale, so what's going on with that? While eating raw meat doesn't automatically cause you to get foodborne illnesses, all meat has bacteria living on its surface. So unless there's a really compelling upside to eating meat raw instead of cooked, you're taking a lot of unnecessary risk. There are cultural dishes like carpaccio and kitfo that definitely involve raw meat, and those are primarily eaten as part of special dining experiences. Not every day for three courses, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Liver King eats tons of raw meat, and he sends packages of it to people like Danny Gonzalez from high-end meat suppliers like White Oak Pastures, where even though they purport to have some of the safest and best products in the world, they still cook it all, including the good old Rocky Mountain oysters they send out. And that is talking about a specialty supplier. For the vast majority of people, especially in the U.S. who go grocery store shopping and not to a specialty butcher shop, it's not gonna work like this. They don't have a good sense of whether the meat they buy would be safe to consume raw. And the USDA would back up the claim that it's never safe to consume raw. The USDA lists its guidelines for cooking all beef organs to a minimum temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 71 degrees Celsius, and never leaving it undercooked. And in case you think that the USDA is just being stingy, they only actually recommend cooking regular beef to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just medium. The biggest thing here is that the outside surface of the meat, the place where bacteria builds up first and fastest, it needs to get a really strong hot cook. That is why most nice restaurants are able to serve you a rare steak, because they know that they're going to get an incredibly hot cook on the outside in order to kill all the most dangerous bacteria. In fact, in an ironic twist, one of the biggest reasons to eat organ meat has historically been that it's economical for your family. Kidneys and livers have historically been much cheaper than muscle beef because it's less tasty and harder to cook. But to get liver and kidneys that you would even consider eating raw, like from White Oak Pastures, which we know the Liver King trusts, you're paying $22 a pound for that beef liver, $14.50 a pound for beef heart, both significantly more expensive than most cuts of beef, including USDA choice T-bones and strip steaks, some of the most desirable meats on the market. At the end of the day, these products are not remotely affordable for the vast majority of people. For a solution that he purports is going to solve the world's mental health problems? No, it's just not accessible to the vast majority of the world. So, scores now tied. Liver King 2, us 2. It's not safe or economical to consume raw meat, but let's just say those aren't factors. Would it be better for you nutritionally if you could eat the meat raw? The answer, again, is a resounding no. The other major reason that humans cook food is, are you ready? Humans have evolved for this. You know, from those ancestral heritages that the Liver King keeps talking about. You want to be king of the planet like the Liver King? Cook your food. That's what our homo sapien grandparents did to get ahead of all the other species out there. It's what set us apart from all the other animal species on Earth. Author Polly Schulman, writing for the American Museum of Natural History, puts it like this. Compared to chimpanzees, our closest living relatives, we have, quote, puny digestive systems. We have smaller teeth, weaker chewing muscles, and shorter gastrointestinal tracts. Those shorter gastrointestinal tracts matter a lot, since that means less opportunity to extract nutrients from our food. And you see, that becomes a problem because compared to the adult chimp, the adult human needs about 400 more calories every day. That's because we have bigger bodies and bigger brains. How is it then that we humans, with our bigger energy needs, are able to get away with having weaker and shorter digestive systems? Well, it's because we pre-digest our food using tools. Instead of relying on strong teeth and strong jaws to chew our food, we rely instead on our strong brains to digest that food before it ever enters our body. We use tools to crush, cut, grind food into smaller bits before it ever enters our mouth. And most critically, we cook our food. The proteins in uncooked meat have intermolecular bonds that are tough to break because when you think about it, raw meat is just whole muscle. It's tough stuff. Cooking the meat, though, denatures those proteins. It changes them into a form that allows the enzymes in our digestive system to actually get at the proteins and break them down so our body can use them. We don't lose nutrition when we cook our meat, we actually make much more of it accessible to our bodies more easily. And what about all those valuable vitamins and minerals in the organ meat? Well, they're still there too when you cook it. Iron in liver isn't gonna magically change into some other element just because you heated it a little bit. You want concrete proof of that? One reason people don't like liver is that it's easy to overcook, meaning it dries out in the pan. The concentration of all the minerals inside becomes higher, bringing out the unpleasant irony flavor because 
because there's so much of it in a small piece of meat. That said, cooking the liver ahead of time means that our digestive juices have to do less work to pull nutrients from food, which is why we can get away with having smaller digestive systems compared to animals. Liver King likes to tout the ancestral lifestyle, but our human ancestors relied on fire for cooking and tools for cutting and grinding as a way of pre-digesting the food. Our ability to use tools is what sets us apart from other animals. It's why humans are weaker than chimps when it comes to raw strength. Ultimately, we beat chimps evolutionarily. Liver King seems to think that eating raw meat is paying homage to our human ancestors, but it's our brain and our stovetop, not our biceps that make us the winning species. So eating raw meat? Well, that's the exact sort of subprimal behavior that he makes fun of in front of his audience. And if that weren't enough of a theory, a food theory, well, I'm pretty sure he knows all of this. Like many an internet charlatan before him, he's selling an aspirational brand, not science. I get a lot of DMs, or a lot of comments. How's living in a mansion? How's flying a private jet? How's having a wakeboarding boat? How's having all this stuff? How's this ancestral? You can be a subprimal and sit on the couch and let life happen to you, or you can be the evolutionary hunter that leaves the comfort of the cave and creates and shapes a better life and moves from that tiny cave to a big, better, more luxurious cave. The guy that creates the wheel, the evolutionary hunter that evolves that into the engine, into the vehicle, into the plane, and then flying private, creating a better life, shaping a better life. This is what he's selling, success. There's no science in that quote, there's confidence and wealth, and that is what all of this is really about. For a guy whose tenants involve connecting with the earth, he's very willing to fly off in private jets. And in fact, this quote redefines ancestral living as going on far off adventures, living in mansions, not exactly bringing Flintstones level realness over there. At the end of the day, the Liver King, for all his ancestral tenants, isn't really living ancestrally. He's projecting a very specific image and then selling the feeling of being powerful and primal to men, mostly young men who he identifies as depressed and underconfident. And people are suffering today with depression, with anxiety. They got low ambition in life. What I'm proposing, my thesis is that there's a simple, elegant solution to living a gosh darn kick butt flippin'. Life. He's happy to charge him $48 for a two-month supply of supplements from a company he owns. I do have three companies that make $100 million a year. Well, he flies around the world doing meat-related stunts, because that's all they are, stunts. And while we've shown that he may be completely wrong about the raw meat from a health perspective, nutrition perspective, and even historic perspective, in the end here, there is one thing and one thing only that shall always remain king, science. Instead of following the private jets, massive pecs, and testicle bites, follow the research, and decide for yourself. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Speaking of dangerous food trends, find out the truth about NyQuil chicken. That's been a popular one on the social media lately. That video's on the left. Or if you want to just keep pumping more iron into your system and don't feel like consuming liver, click the video on the right to find out why you should be eating chocolate and not spinach. As always, my friends, I'll see you next week.